Hey guys, today we are going to learn how to color and stitch GoPro RAW photos captured with the GoPro Fusion camera right here with the brand new Fusion Studio 1.2 and Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom so you can have photos like this to this. Let's get started! Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Hugh here from Creator Up. So right now I just finished downloading the brand new version of the Fusion Studio 1.2 as you see right here. This is the version that allows you to handle raw photo directly from the GoPro Fusion camera. As you see, this is brand new under file. Now you can open raw photos as you see right here. So if you click that, they actually pop up and teach you what you should do exactly. You can follow this instruction, but again, I'm going to show you exactly step by step how to do that. Step one, before we actually open Photoshop or Confusion Studio, we're going to organize all the photos into one folders. I put both the front and back photo into the same folders. And then I go through each photo in the JPEG to see which one I want to use and which one it just I'm not going to use. So after that, I'll create a folder file number name right here. So I put all the JPEG and the GPR file into this folder. So GPR is GoPro RAW. And you can think about the GPR file just like your DNG file come your DSLR. It's a RAW photo file. You can open directly in Adobe Lightroom or Adobe Camera RAW. And this is how we're gonna color grade this file. And I tend to use Adobe Bridge for organization purposes. So go ahead and open Adobe Bridge and go to picture and go ahead and find that folder right here. Again, you can also like organize your photo in Adobe Bridge and it's actually easier doing that way. So now go ahead in Adobe Bridge, open that folder. And here, go ahead and pick the GPR file, right click and hit open in camera raw right here. Again, you can do the same thing with Adobe Lightroom, but I'm gonna show you how to do it in Camera Raw instead. So first thing I will do is actually find the highlight of the picture and find out where the picture is blown out. And as you see, the front lens is actually where they capture the sun, right here. And as you see, this like really dark red spot, meaning that this area is blown out. So first thing I will do is actually protect highlight. So what I usually do is drop the highlight all the way but until you doesn't see the red blowout signal. And the next thing I do usually write the shadow because I like to create that high HDR look. So I write the shadow pretty high here. And then I like to rise up the clarity as you see right here to pretty high. And then rise the vibrance right here to bring the HDR color out. Around there look good. Again, this really depends on your style, how you color grade your picture. That is just my style. And the next thing I would do, actually denoising. So because this is a raw photo, I can really heavy denoise. So I will pop it a bit like around here and then sharpening the image as well. So get rid of those like GoPro looking noise. And then the next thing I would do it's actually that's a very important step is to click the remove chromatic aberration if you only do one thing that is the thing i will do so if you pay attention any fish dot lens usually create chromatic aberration around the edges around here if you click that and then the purple haze will be gone around the edges i will even go a step further again that is optional i will even remove a little bit of purple fringe because i just find out that there is a lot of color purple and in the edge of the lens that's really specific to gopo fusion and i really want to get rid of that not even that i'm actually going to right here in the color saturation i will bring down the purple and the magenta to really suppress the purple of the lens and I will show you exactly why I do that later in the color correction process. And then you can go ahead and select Control A to select everything. And right here, you can just sync setting. That will bring out your synchronization window and go ahead and sync everything. After you sync two picture, I will go back to the other picture to make sure everything look good. And actually, I want to show you the purple problem come up with the GoPro fusion. Let me drop this all the way down and actually reset that. And then go over here and then I push the vibrant all the way up. Pay attention to the sky and then up the saturation. 
You see the really weird purple color with coming out from the sky, and that is actually a really general issue on all the picture I took with my GoPro Fusion. So that's why I usually would drop the saturation of purple, as you see the purple now just go away, and also even magenta. And then suppress the purple fringe a little bit more. So now it's safe for me to push the vibrant and saturation if I want to. But again, that is a little bit dramatic, so I usually don't even touch saturation. Some extra step I will do, again, you don't need to do that. I will play the curve. So I will just create a general S curve right here. And then all the way up to rise up the tail to create that like really interesting faded look and uh, really popular right now in a lot of Instagram picture. That's what I would do. So that is to my liking. So again, go ahead and select everything and sing it again to make sure these two pictures is sync exactly the same setting. So go back and forth, and I think both pictures look good now. So now you can actually open image. You can open both of them directly in Photoshop. And if you have any third-party Photoshop plugin, your usual Photoshop workflow, you can bring into Photoshop and do further color correction and make the picture even look better. Again, this is really personal taste. So I will leave that part to you. From here, I will generate my final images for Fusion Studio to stitch. So what I would do is again, go ahead and make sure I select both image. Right here, save image, hit save. It bring out the save option. Right here in the file naming, I will pick the document naming, which is the original file naming. But in here, I will add an extension called underscore GoPro raw. That is a naming convention to make the Fusion Studio recognize this is a GoPro raw picture and make the stitch happen. So that is actually a very important step. So make sure just copy and paste this setting in here. So make sure the name will name it like the file name underscore GPR. And then we're going to save it as a JPEG format. And in here, because uh, I want to have a maximum quality, so I will pick the maximum quality right here. And then everything else, you can just leave it as a default. And then you can go ahead and find location to save. I will usually create a new folder right here. Just say output. And then save the two file in output. So here's output folder as that two new GPR image right here. And then the last step is go ahead and grab the JPEG and then copy that into the output folder. So now make sure that we have four files, the original JPEG picture and the new GoPro raw JPEG picture. And now go ahead and go back to the GoPro Fusion. Go ahead and hit got it and go ahead and open that output folder we just saved. And GoPro Fusion will find the HDR photos right here, as you see. So from then forward, you just go ahead and output it. One thing I will do before I do that is actually I will want to output in the folder I choose. So go ahead and hit edit right here. Preference and export location right here. I'll find a location I want to export. Go back and then I can go ahead and hit add to render queue. Go ahead and pick the highest setting possible. And then right here, right click. I will pick TIFF file instead of JPEG, just make sure they have the highest quality possible so I can do a further adjustment if I need to. And then go ahead and hit render selected. And then now Fusion Studio will create a TIFF file. Now I can open back up into Photoshop. So one thing I would do right now is using the brand new Photoshop feature right here, new panorama layer from selected layer and generate a 360 picture. And then if you want to remove the tripod right here, you can do that. But actually, I got a handheld here, so we don't need to remove any tripod. So I'll just find the horizon line right here. And that is the open frame of the image. And then I can go ahead and hit export panorama. And then export panorama, the picture I can upload on Facebook, and then create a panorama picture. But if you want to create a tiny planet picture for your Instagram, that's usually what I would do. I can just go ahead and using a filter, Flexify 2, that's usually what I use. But again, there's a many, many other way to create tiny planet photos, but that's what I usually do. So right here is actually, for this software, it's actually really easy. So you can go ahead and pick a tiny, pick a tiny planet picture. It generates a tiny planet picture for you. And from here, I just do some setting adjustment. And go ahead and hit OK. I will make the image into Instagram format.
Another thing I will do is I will convert this layer into a smart object. In here, I will add extra filter. We can go back to camera raw here to add more color correction, or you can just use one of your plugin. And here, I just use one of my plugin to make this easier process. And then the advantage of using a smart object is if you don't like this preset, you can just pick other preset to find the color you like. And then from here, I can just go ahead and render out as a PNG or JPEG file and they can upload on Instagram. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it, don't forget to give me a like. The next tutorial, we're going to talk about another exciting feature coming out from the Fusion Studio 1.2, especially how to color grade the brand new flat footage from video footage from this camera. And we'll also talk about the brand new 5.2 higher resolution 360 video from the Fusion and how to stitch that. If you want to learn about all that, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time.